Don Sapachetti, Chris McCarthy, Alex Reamer, Boston Herald Drive on Boston Herald Radio here till 9 o'clock. We are now joined by Roger Stone, author of the books The Clinton's War on Women, as well as Jeb and the Bush Crying Family. Good morning, Roger. How are you? Delighted to be back with you. Always a pleasure having you on. Uh, Roger, of course, the big news of the day has been uh, Donald Trump uh, not saying that the president was born in the United States. He's kind of... uh, not going in that direction, whereas many of his surrogates and supporters are. At some point, can we expect Donald Trump to just admit that President Obama was born in Hawaii and move on from that issue? Well, he's always had suspicions about this, and to him it has never added up. I would add, though, that it hasn't really been a focus point of this presidential campaign. These are issues that, uh, you know, the elites trashed him for four years ago. Uh, The... uh, most of this, of course, is a certified distraction from Hillary's health problems. I mean, all of a sudden, David Duke is back in the news cycle. All of a sudden, birtherism is back in the news cycle. Uh, I think what this is really about is panic by the Democrats who see Trump pulling ahead in Ohio, pulling ahead in Pennsylvania, pulling ahead in Florida, pulling ahead in Nevada, pulling ahead in Iowa. Incredible polls. These are, you know, some of these are CNN polls, for the thing. But if it is a distraction, Roger, then why doesn't Donald just come out and say Obama was born in the United States and end the distraction? Why does he keep it going? Well, I must tell you, I assumed that uh, that, that was what they were doing when I saw the comments of Rudy Giuliani and uh, Ben Carson, and I really thought this was a one-day half story. Um, but the thing about Trump, of course, is that he, he will never be pressured into doing something that he does not want to do. Um, this is what I think makes him a great negotiator. He is tough. He's got real concerns here. I think the bottom line is he doesn't know. He's not sure. That's not the same as I'm certain the president was born either in Hawaii or I'm certain that he was not. What, 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 what more does Obama's, he need to see, Obama's though? Obama's actions in this matter kind of, I think, lead him to that conclusion. Obama did, uh, did release his birth certificate, Produced though. It, so yes. what more does uh, Donald Trump need to see? You think? Well, uh, there are many people who are uh, far more knowledgeable than I am about the Internet and about the computerized graphics who have a, a belief that the document that was produced is not real. I don't know. I'm not an expert on this. I also don't really care in the sense that Obama's presidency think, is uh, essentially over. Uh, we're not running against Barack Obama, at least not directly. Trump is running against four more years of Obama, perhaps. But Hillary Clinton is opponent, and this is a this is a media fostered distraction. In terms of the campaign, though, don't you think it would make sense if he's trying to appeal to some of the black voters to kind of move on from it and put it behind him? You know, I saw a poll yesterday, a credible poll in South Carolina, shows him getting twenty six percent of the African American vote. Now, I don't believe that those voters don't already know his position on this issue. I'm seeing. Uh, Black voters far more concerned about the uh, Hillary's role in the 1994 crime bill, which sent an entire generation of young black men to prison for uh, the nonviolent crime of small uh, amounts of drugs in their possession, and ironically, to harsher penalties for people who utilize rock cocaine as opposed to powdered cocaine. That's the Clinton right. legacy. Hillary, you recall, said that this was necessary because blacks were super predators who must be brought to heal. Hey, Roger, um, you've been with Donald Trump a long time as his political advisor. You took a, you know, a little bit of a step back from his campaign uh, early on. But let me ask you this question. Can you, are you prepared to make a prediction as to uh, Donald Trump winning and by how much in the Electoral College? Uh, I must tell you, I am growingly confident, although uh, cautiously optimistic, I would say. Uh, these new polls show me that structurally he can win. He was ahead nationally briefly after the convention. I think he'll be ahead nationally here shortly. This is a manifestation both of being pretty disciplined about being on message and pounding those themes that got him nominated, immigration, trade, our fiscal situation, and so on. Uh, And uh, let's face it, we have the slow motion collapse of Hillary Clinton. This is like weekend at Bernie's. I mean, uh, the woman is obviously ill. She got caught lying about it. She told three different stories. First, it was heat prostration. Then it was the flu. And now it's pneumonia. But just on the Electoral Uh, College, Roger, do you have a number you could give us that you think Trump will hit? Well, 
it's a little premature for that. What's interesting to me, though, is that states like Pennsylvania and Michigan uh, and Wisconsin uh, are in play. Um, Virginia, I think, is problematic for Trump. He's got to make ground there, but I think he still has time to do so. And, of course, a, a big factor in the election will be the debates, three of them scheduled, first one in a couple of weeks. I know you're not formally with the campaign anymore, Roger, but could you give us some insight as to how uh, Trump is preparing for the debates and have you assisted in that process in any way? Uh, you know, Trump is uh, unprogrammed. He's uncoached. <laughs> he is un, uh, uh, unguided. Uh, he is uh, genuine. He, he's authentic. Uh, and he likes to do things like Frank Sinatra his way. Uh, he clearly is preparing, although I don't think you're going to have the kind of formal preparations where somebody stands in for Hillary uh, and all that. I think it's notable that Trump insisted on a 90-minute debate, no commercial, no bathroom breaks, wall to wall. Um, and the Hillary Clinton's people fought that very hard in the negotiations for reasons that I think are obvious. I'm not sure she has the stamina to go toe-to-toe with Donald Trump. We're joined by Roger Stone here on Boston Herald Radio. Uh, Roger, you have said that uh, you think that Donald Trump should release his taxes. Every presidential candidate in the last 40 years has done so. Have you told him that, and why is he holding back on releasing those taxes? Uh, He's aware of my view. Uh, I'm just talking about political considerations. I think this issue did Mitt Romney a great deal of damage. When Romney's tax returns finally uh, came out, there really was no particular smoking gun. Uh, I think just from a political point of view, the sooner he can release these, the better. He has said that he will do so. Now it's just a question of the timing. So uh, I laud that decision. Is there a reason why he he won't in terms of, again, maybe getting ahead of the story? Or is it just a a campaign mechanism that keeps the story fostered and and, and maybe as a distraction at some point and then just playing out the clock to, to get to November 8th without having to do so? I think that's unlikely. I don't think the mainstream media will allow him to do that without sustaining the kind of damage that Romney sustained. Mm -hmm. Uh, I really take him at his word when he says he has an ongoing audit. It's ironic that the IRS has time to audit Donald Trump, but they're not investigating the Clinton Foundation, where you have, you know, uh, and they have been presented numerous detailed complaints uh, of wrongdoing, of illegal activity, and still there is no formal investigation by the IRS into the uh, the Clinton charity scam. Roger, uh, we know that the other night there was a story uh, posted by Newsweek talking about Donald Trump's businesses with nearly a quarter of his businesses overseas. It seemed to be somewhat telling. What's your reaction to the Newsweek story that was uh, released on Wednesday night? You know, I think there's a lot of muckraking, uh, and Trump knew from the beginning that people would be combing through all of his various entrepreneurial activities trying to find failure or trying to find mistakes. Now, even Babe Ruth struck out. Not everything Donald Trump has done has been a roaring success, just most of the things. He's built an extraordinary family fortune and an extraordinary brand. Um, but as he said to me, look, you learn by failing. When you try something and it doesn't work, you try something else, and you also never try the thing you tried that failed again. So um, I I really am not concerned about this. The mainstream media increasingly panicked that their their favorite candidate, Hillary Clinton, is falling behind, now wants to cause these distractions to try to make this race about Trump. But it's her party who's been in office for eight years. This election is, thanks to her, largely about her. Roger, um, you've been involved in many, many political campaigns, and you know the RNC very well. How closely is the Trump campaign and the RNC working together in an attempt to do to traditional campaigning and to get out the vote? Are they, have they synced their, their operations? Well, I think the answer is yes and no. As a Trump loyalist, because I'm Trump first and a Republican second, uh, I do have a concern that in some states like Virginia, like Florida, like Ohio, that the targeting that is being used by the RNC is beneficial to Republicans, but not necessarily beneficial to Donald Trump. Let me give you an example. There's 256,000 Democrats in northeastern Ohio who voted in this year's Republican primary, which is, of course, legal. And uh, to do so, um, one can merely fill out the forms and vote. Now, it's incumbent on the Trump campaign to turn those people out in November. They are Democrats for Trump. It is not in the interest of the U.S. Senate candidate in Ohio, Rob Portman, an incumbent, to turn out those those right. people. And the RNC um, does not have them targeted uh, at this time. So, 
there are wrinkles here and there, but I do think they are trying to mesh, you know, some kind of a decent uh, ground game. And in general, Roger, to talk about the Trump campaign, a couple months, of course, uh, Steve Bannon on board, Kellyanne Conway on board as well. Um, how do you think their influence has been on on on, on, uh, on Donald Trump over the last uh, six weeks or so since they've been put in charge? Have you seen well, any noticeable differences? Yeah, uh, you know, I think the truth is many of these things that they uh, have done a very good job of executing were laid out in the Manda- Manafort era, the, the trip to Mexico, the immigration speech, and so on. Uh, on the other hand, Trump's deft handling of Hillary's collapse on 9-11, where he's kind of piling on, he wished her well and wished her a speedy recovery. I think that's the first big decision by the new team, and it is the right one. Uh, I think Bannon is a, is a great addition for two reasons. One, he understands the new media, and particularly for a campaign that is underfunded, uh, and this one will be compared to the Clintons, um, that's crucial because I think the dollar spent on social media gives you more bang for your buck. And then secondarily, of course, he understands the deep recesses of the Clinton Irv. He understands them inside and out, having been the publisher of Clinton Cash by Peter Schweitzer and having, as an investigative reporter and publisher, you know, really pursued the Clintons on many fronts on the pages of Breitbart. Roger, before we let you go, we know we saw leaks, uh, Colin Powell emails this week. Are you concerned that any type of organization will leak Trump's tax returns, any of Trump's emails, any of your emails? Any concern with that? Well, hacking seems to be the thing du jour. I mean, uh, it's extraordinary. Everybody seems to be hacking everybody else. Now, the Trump cybersecurity in the Trump organization, I think, is quite strong. But anything is is possible. And I I expect... uh, Julian Assange and the WikiLeaks people to uh, drop a payload of new documents on Hillary on a weekly basis fairly soon. Uh, And that, of course, will answer the question as to what exactly was erased on that email server. Roger, have you or the campaign been in touch with Julian Assange at any point? Uh, I have no idea about whether I don't believe the campaign is in touch with him, at least not that I know of. I am in touch with him through an intermediary. Uh, I'm an admirer of his. I think he's a hero fighting the deep state. I remember how the liberals loved it when he was exposing uh, the foibles of the Bush administration. Now, all of a sudden, they're trying to discredit him. That's because they know that he has the smoking gun emails on Hillary. Would we consider Julian Assange a Trump supporter? Uh, I don't think so. First of all, uh, he's not an American citizen, Mm -hmm. so I don't think he is a supporter of either candidate. I think he's an opponent of the deep state. Do you, Roger, do you think he's a um, he's a surrogate of the Russian intelligence agencies? No, that's Clinton's spin. Uh, he addressed that himself uh, not long ago. Uh, he's a, he's an independent operator. Now, it is true that some of his revelations have been inadvertently beneficial to the Soviets, or I should say to the Russians, but uh, that's because our government got caught lying on a number of occasions. And, of course, uh, Hillary is the, is the candidate who's done errands at a high pay rate, I might add, for the Russian oligarchs around Putin. So her association to Putin is far more troubling to me than Donald Trump's. Roger Stone can be followed on Twitter at Roger J. Stone Jr. Get out to see his books, The Clinton's War on Women or The Jeb and the Bush Crime Family. Roger, thanks so much for joining us. Have a great weekend.